Tavarishi, I am Admiral Andre, and I welcome you to the second episode of Race into Space. I've just saved the game. I'm just continuing the recording, actually. I haven't exited the game here. So let's just leave the administration, and another airplane is taking off there. We can kill it by just exiting there. So since the last episode, our wonderful Baikonur center here has expanded. We now have an airfield where we will train our uh, cosmonauts in advanced capsule skills. We have a pool where we will do their endurance. I don't know why it says ADV, I would say EVA perhaps, endurance training. So that's fine. And uh, that's also where they do the uh, whole centrifuge thing. The cosmonaut center we've seen and there the things keep flying by here. Wish I could turn that off. There's also a helipad where the uh, cosmonauts can get some more skills. I think this has to do with the, the whole thing that Neil Armstrong was almost killed by. The flying bedstand thing. So this is pretty much for, for landing on the moon. In any case, our brave heroes are still busy with their training. There's the infirmary as well. Hopefully no one ends up there. They can also do advanced docking in the planetarium. And what else? Where are they right now? Every time I click back, there's something is flying by. I guess it's a busy, busy uh, space center here. Cosmonaut center, uh, docking, uh, infirmary, basic training. That's still where they are. They will be here, I think, for another one turn, perhaps. So that's when they'll be done with their basic training. You can see their mood as well. Unlike in, uh, well, to some extent in Buzz Aldrin Space Program Manager, if people were unhappy, they would also quit. But you could just pay them more and they'll, they'd be happy. Of course, this is communism, so we can't do that. But if they don't get to fly, these cosmonauts will quit very quickly. So let's go back and see what we can still research. We need to improve the capsule. It's not going to be ready by the time that the cosmonauts are finished with their training, I think. Then we also need to work on the suit as much as possible. The suit is actually going to be ready before we can send them in the capsule. Oh well. The rocket, of course, is as far as it will go. So with that said, we're not going to plan a launch for next season. So let's just... Oh yes, the, the, the KGB had something for us. They're talking about codename Twins. The KGB reports that the United States is developing the boosters and rate their uh, reliability at 81%. Now that's the other interesting aspect in this game. With many of your rockets, you can strap some boosters onto them and they will give you more launch capacity. Can we do that though? Let's just have a look. Uh, but before that, let's just look at the stats. They still don't know anything about US satellites or launch, ve or launch vehicles or boosters or capsules, just their boosters. So let's quit this and go to our center here. Yes, we didn't look at the lo rockets last time. So the R7, of course, then we get the Proton, and I think we can strap some boosters to this thing. So its max payload is 1500. Then we get the N1 rocket, and then the UR700, which is something that never flew in real life, but that's what we can use to do the direct ascent with. And then the boosters as well. Boosters are a cheap thing that you can use to get more out of your more basic rockets. So maybe we'll do that actually. Once we have money that is. So let's just quit this season and hear what Svetlana has to say. And if the US has something as well. It's already 1959. Nope, nothing. Good evening. And now the news. Soviet technology triumphs again. The Soviets have successfully tested the largest rocket engine in the world. I don't know what that means for us, the largest rocket engine in the world. Does it mean our rocket gets extra safety? I don't know. Un unknown. Other events in the news. Communist China is straying from the path of Leninist theory. Not good. And that's our news broadcast. So they're still busy with their training, I think. Yes, they're busy with basic training 3, so they'll be done on the next turn. 
unless we want to send them for advanced training. But to be honest, I rarely do that. Right now we've got a lot of cash and we need to plan ahead. So I think we actually need to start working on the Cosmos satellite. How much does that weigh? 700, so we can't send it up with an R7. We also need to work on the Proton. That's going to eat up almost all of our money though. Should we do that? Although the rockets take a long time to get ready. Okay, but before we talk about that, let's actually finish the research on the capsule. And it's not nearly ready yet. And of course the suit. The suits are basically ready to go. Uh, this is really unfortunate. Maybe on the next turn it will be ready. Then we have 70 left. Uh, I don't think we can strap boosters to a uh, R7 rocket though. You know, I might just have a quick look just to confirm that. Okay, so I'm opening up the manual here. You can only see a small part of the screen, unfortunately. But let's uh, see where I could find that. Uh, what would happen if I searched for it? Yes, uh, let's see. Most of the major rocket boosters... Uh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. The terminating rocket... No, 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 no. Strap-on boosters. There we go. But now, this is the US side. I don't want that. Space hardware. Boosters. Explorer Sputnik. No... Boosters or strap-ons can be added for launches, but not used separately. I'm not sure what that means. Kicker, there we go. The, the booster program may be used only in conjunction with the A-series, although we don't have the A-series in the game, I think. Unless that refers to the R7. The Proton or the N1 rocket and include, uh, increase the overall lift cap capability. So, since it works with the Atlas, it will work with the R7. So, okay, now we know that. And the kickers, uh, the A kicker there, can propel one spacecraft from Earth orbit to lunar orbit, either Gemini or Voskhod, and mini shuttles, and so on. More powerful can one spacecraft or one spacecraft LM combo. But that's not what we have to worry about now. So let's go back to the game and just start working on the boosters. That's a thing we can use with many of our rockets. So purchase that and it's not that expensive and begin working on it. And continue. So shall we book a launch for the next season? I think so. Cosmonauts, uh, no, exit, that's not what I wanted. Future missions on pad A. We can buy more pads, but we don't have many things going on yet. So, what's available this season? If we actually, I just scroll through it, that's how I get all of the various things. Like Venus flyby is available right now, but depending on the season, it will not be available because obviously the planets have to line up properly. But that's not relevant. We don't have a satellite that could do that anyway. So what we want, should we do a manned suborbital or a manned Earth orbital? You can see the suborbital will not have a penalty, but the orbital will. And I don't know if we want to risk that. Let's be, let's be a, a anachronistic here and do the suborbital. I don't think the Soviets ever did that unless they, you know, made it classified and never told anyone. They just started straight up with the normal launch of Yuri Gagarin, which went, of course, one orbit around the Earth. But then again, maybe we should also do that. Yes, why not? Let's be reckless. Oh, we can't even book it yet because we don't have any people in the assigned to the capsules here. Could we do an unmanned suborbital? Yes, that will also help the equipment, I think. So, just to make sure it works before we put a person in, then we'll go straight into the orbital. Which is again what the Soviets did. They did the, uh, what was it called now? Korabel Sputnik, I think, before they sent the Sputnik up. Anything more we need to do? I think we can actually buy one of the R7s, perhaps, just so we know how much money we have left for the, the next season. Sometimes we'll get discounts on equipment, but we haven't yet. 
And that's it. So I think, should we do the Cosmos as well? I think so. Do the, do the Cosmos satellite as well. Keep uh, an eye on the money, but 6 megabucks should be okay. At least we're starting on that, since we might be able to use the strap-on boosters with the R7. So that's it. Let's go to the next season and see what those uh, pesky capitalists are up to. If they do a launch, I'll let the, let the whole video play, and then only next time I will skip it. Yeah, they do. Premonition. They do a one-person craft and a manned space mission. So that means suborbital, I think. They would have said manned orbital if they succeeded with that. So they just skipped the whole satellite and went straight into the manned missions. For some reason, we're not getting any sounds from that. It's very weird. Oh well, can just click on it to see the next phase. Obviously it succeeded, otherwise it wouldn't have come up here. And they do a manned orbital as well. Wonderful. I'm just clicking through it. Okay, it's fall 1960, so now we're behind the Americans again. Good evening. And now, the news. The Central Committee grossly underestimated the development costs for the space project. R&D costs an additional 1 MB per scientist team permanently. Okay, so the EVA suits will cost us more to research, but I love how she said development, like Chekhov, which is not how Russians speak, I think. Anyway, in cosmonaut news, all of our cosmonauts have graduated, which is not a, a common thing. A lot of them fall out during the training, usually. So maybe this bodes well. Check intelligence, the KGB reports. Well, thanks a lot. We already know they went to orbit. It's not going to help if you tell me about it now. The Soviet Union congratulates Cuba for the nationalizing of capitalist American property. This concludes our news broadcast. So, let's have a look. We first have to assign the crew to the uh, Vostok program. So, I'll assign all of them since we don't have any other things happening. Then I'll say transfer facility and then this will take us there as well. So, I'll put Gagarin in the first crew. So, in this case, every person is on his own crew. Sometimes we also get women, but we didn't have any available this time. Which is, I think, it's a good thing that we can get some women, because that would have been nice since, uh, what was her name, Valentina Tereshkova was the first woman, and she was Soviet in space. So we can already see Nel Nelubov is not happy. He's a yellow. If we don't want to lose him, or Nikolaev, we have to, or Popovich. Or Bekovsky, we have to send them up as soon as possible. So now that we've assigned them to crews, I can just do some more research on the uh, capsule here. Now it's 80. Okay, now we're ready. And it's a good thing that we therefore booked the season for that. So we already have all the equipment. I'll just go to the integration facility. Oh, it's unmanned anyway. Oh, well. It's fine, we're, we, we're behind the US anyway, so no need to, to rush this mission now. Let's just assign it and then say we're going to do it by October, because that was the date of the October Revolution, so it's the an anniversary for that. We always need to milk the political capital out of all of these things as well. But for the next mission, I'll book a manned orbital. Continue, and now we have to choose who it will be. We also have a backup crew in case the first one gets ill. So who is it that we don't want to lose? We have to look at their stats. Okay, Gagarin is green, so we don't we, we don't have to worry about him now. Baikovsky has the best skills of anyone. Four and two. So I think let's get him up as soon as possible. Assign him. For some reason I can't make primary. Okay, then we need a secondary and I think we'll take Nelubov, make backup. Then we say assign. Okay, great. So that's done and we are finished here. We have seven megabucks left, so we can't do much more. Could we work on the suits? Six megabucks. Okay, at least it's a bit better now. Okay, let's do this and see what happens. 
So now I'm just going to say continue, but since this is our mission, I won't skip it unless we do another one of the same type. But I, uh, I want us to also see the odds. We'll see a bar there and it will fill up just before the, the, the next event happens. And then if it crosses a certain line, the mission step will be a failure. But sometimes we can get it so that it's not a catastrophic failure but uh, yes it's like rolling a dice basically and if we roll more than we have in our safety factor then it's a fail so let's have a look we'll see it on the bottom here we can ignore these things on the side it's just flavor flavor graphics i guess the picture here is going to be the same that we saw before it's going to happen now Okay, so you see there, it's green and then we had a blue extent, so we didn't roll more than our safety factor, so we know it will be a success on the launch. All is good, comrade! But there's no one in that uh, capsule anyway, so... It shouldn't have a somebody saying all is good, comrade, unless it's in the mission control. Okay, next step. Okay, we didn't get any more steps. Oh well. No prestige for that, but it's an unmanned one, so we wouldn't have got anyway. But did it help our equipment? Good evening. And now, the news. Oh man, I come on. Not fear the physical and may not participate in any spaced missions for the duration of Bekovsky has been injured, so now his his it backup has to, to fly. Yes. So it's a good I thing we did a backup, it. otherwise it would have had to be scrubbed now. Oh well, too bad for Bekovsky then and for us. Relations were established with Cuba. Comrade Castro has to be congratulated as a great communist. Well, we can debate that. Let's see. Um, should we just get the thing over with? Let's just have a look. It's nothing there we can do. Uh, we could work on the suits a bit more. I'll I'll invest four mega bucks in that. That gets it almost to the max that we could do. So we can now forget about the suits. And the, I think we have to start working honestly on the proton rocket. That's going to be used a lot by our space program. So let's visit the purchasing facility. It will cost 60, but we have to do it now. Otherwise, it's not happening for another year almost. And 20, that's too much. Let's just invest four into it right now. And then we still have the boosters as well. 10 megabucks. Everything wants money. Let's invest six. Just in case we need to do another launch next season. Actually, let's quit this. Uh, I want to book another manned orbital for next season. Just in case this one fails. And also, even if it succeeds, we need our people to get some flight experience. That will make them happy. So, of course, we can't book our friend. Uh, Popovich... Let's take Nikolaev. He's going to be the primary and Gagarin will be the backup. And then exit there and see what happens. Uh, there's a problem. No, good. We still have to assign the whole thing. Assemble and we just have to still purchase the rockets. Oh well. Purchase because we used it now with the suborbital one. Luckily we had enough money left. Then we assign it for May. That's fine. And now we can quit. And let's have a look. It's a fail. It's going to blow up. Okay, no. Luckily, even though it was a fail, they shut it down. Okay, so we're not going to space this season. Mission failure, major booster problem, launch is cancelled. So you see we rolled a 98 there, which is almost impossible to, to win against. So 
even no matter how good we had our rocket, it wouldn't have succeeded. Prestige minus seven, wonderful. Good evening, and now the news. There has been an important advance in engineering for the space program. Any hardware purchases will be credited at half price for this season. And now we don't have enough money to buy any hardware. If you're lucky, this happens once in a game. And now, of course, it would have been better if we had this happen on the start of a budget season. So we had a lot of money. But we don't, so it's useless. The KGB has some new information. Soviet scientists have fired a, s a 50 ton meg a 50 megaton hydrogen bomb, the largest explosion in history. This was, would be the Tsar bomber. This concludes our news, and let's just go to the KGB. They have shoehorn a one-person capsule for five days. So the U.S. is really moving ahead here. The KGB reports that the U.S. is developing Mercury is 93%. Potemkin was before that. That was the Atlas booster. Let's look at the stats. So their satellite is better than ours, but they haven't used it yet. Uh, they already have the Titan booster, and it's already in a state where they can use it. Then the capsules, ours is, ours is better, but it hasn't gone up yet. They have a suit now as well, and it's as good as ours, and they are working on, it looks like, the Kicker A. So we might very well lose this game, and fast as well. So, I think first things first, let's buy the uh, equipment that we'll need. It only costs two, luckily, and then assign that so that somebody goes to space today. Then what can we do with seven megabucks? Almost nothing. Let's use it on the boosters. Six. So it's now 67%. Okay. Well, we'll see. At least it helps a little, but now we couldn't get any hardware. Oh, well, let's see. Should we book another one for next mission? I think so. Or next season. Let's do a... Manned orbital EVA. That will be fine with a with a Vostok, even though it wouldn't be in real life. But we can do it here. Popovich uh, vacant. Why is that one vacant still? Let's use no. We don't want Komarov. We want people with a good EVA skill. So we want Bondarenko on this one, and then. Nelubov has had one attempt already, but that was the guy who didn't go off the launch pad. Luckily, he didn't die. Then we'll just have to take either Popovich or Komarov, but they will be the backups, so hopefully they won't go for the EVA. Let's just have a look at our ad administration of our uh, cosmonauts. Where is the other one? He's still in the infirmary, I guess. Yes, Baikovsky. He must have had a terrible injury somewhere wasn't in a rocket luckily all right let's go for this thing uh, we must set a launch date oh yes I always forget that just assign it doesn't matter okay confirm yes we didn't have a penalty to the booster luckily didn't look like it da Good luck, comrade. Ow! Come on! Aren't we supposed to be the best rocket engine builders in the world? And we can't get off the ground. This is humiliating. They're going to fire me for this. Negative ignition. That's a lovely way to put it. Rocket shuts down safely. Okay, at least with no one dies. But this is the end of my career. That's another, another 7% or 7 prestige gone. Good evening. And now oh, come on. an engineering error means that the next mission launched has a fifty percent chance of exploding during launch. This game is absolutely brutal. This I've never seen anything yeah. like it before. So yes, Bekovsky is no longer in the hospital, but our next mission has a fifty percent chance of blowing up, which uh 
probably means we have to cancel it unless we just want to push it anyway. I think let's just push it. We're losing so badly here. It's 1962 and we haven't even had a man in suborbital trajectory yet. Let's risk it. What else can I do? Let's pay the money and just assemble it. Launch. Okay, let's see. Next thing. We have to now put some money. You see our money is getting less and less every budget time due to our lack of prestige. So let's just put some money into this proton thing. And I'm not going to start with a Voskhod capsule yet. We want the Cosmos satellite. Okay, it's ready to go now. So we should book that as well. Okay, the boosters are ready as well and we are broke almost. Let's just see, could we launch a... We can't buy another pad now. What about using the Cosmos satellite on a manned lunar or unmanned lunar flyby? Is this now with a probe? I don't want people doing this. Orbital satellite, manned suborbital, unmanned, manned, unmanned, Earth orbital, man, lunar flyby. It's got a very bad penalty here, but we're going to try it. That's not a manned lunar flyby. Okay, let's see what the Americans are up to. Nothing. Okay, fine. So let's see what we can do this time. I'm not going to skip this yet. We haven't succeeded yet. Okay, successful ignition. Good luck, comrade. The Soviet Union can into space. Good to hear, comrade. I will salute you. Next step. Orbital insertion. A fail. Now it's only if he dies or not. Engine nozzle out of control. Computer override gains control. Ground control scrubs the mission. So he didn't get into orbit. At least the re-entry was a success. The yellow on the top there I think is his skill that adds a little bit extra to our total safety factor. And a fail on the recovery. Of course, they had to jump out of the Vostok capsules on the way down and use their own parachutes. But now, is he going to die? You can't escape two fails on one mission. I think he's dead. All systems go. Vostok parachute fails to deploy. Cosmonaut ejects safely, but capsule is destroyed. What a lucky person. Bondarenko has survived two failures on one mission. That is unbelievable. So anyway, but yes, the reason why they eject out of the Vostok is because even if the Vostok capsule uh, parachute deploys successfully, it hits the ground too hard. So that's really not uh, favorable for their survival, I think. So they just have to escape and use their own parachutes. So it's another minus four prestige, but at least we get somebody into space. Technically, I guess. Suborbital. Good evening. And now the news. Ten million workers work overtime in order to donate rubles to the space. Program. Comrades, I love you. This concludes. Our they gave us rubles, even though we used megabucks. But anyway. Thank you, great comrades. You work overtime to sacrifice for Grolia spa space uh, program. The KGB reports new information. Premier Khrushchev prevents Trigger Happy President Kennedy from starting a nuclear war. 
The Premier's statesmanship restores calm to the crisis. Great, glorious Khrushchev, Premier, Soviet Union. Just playing into the propaganda there. Uh, so what now? What does the KGB have to say? They have spied her. They already have a surveyor lunar lander and it's at 94%. We are going to lose so bad. On the other hand, of course, the computer could also have a series of failures and then uh, we could still win, but I don't know. In this one, at least, we don't have a 1969 deadline like in uh, Buzz Aldrin Space Program Manager. So let's just have a look. What can we do? Cash is only 16 megabucks. Uh, we were going to do the Cosmos launch. I think we should do it anyway. We seem to have terrible luck with our manned space program. Okay, let's launch the Cosmos thing. Cosmos and Proton. Could we do booster Proton, booster N1? No, so we couldn't do a booster with a R7 rocket anyway. That manual lied to us. So, yes, we could do the booster with a proton, but that's not necessary. So we'll just do a proton, even though the the chance is only 48%. But hey, luckily the thing didn't blow up last time when we had the 50% chance of it blowing up. So that's that's something, I guess. Let's just see if we can boost this proton a little bit more before launch. Let's give it 8 megabucks, at least over 50%. And get the cosmos as well, as good as we can. Because if it succeeds, that bit of prestige will give us more money. Next time we'll make another uh, booking for a manned orbital, EVA. And this will be... That crew is still vacant there. Actually, I have to assign... Uh, Okay, cancel, reset, continue, exit, exit. Lots of things to click here. Let's just see, I have to reassign our great comrade Bekovsky to the Vostok program. And then I have to reassign him to flight crew 4. And then I have to go back to the administration and book the mission and scroll up and click on this one with the EVA, Vostok. Why is he training again? I guess it's because we just put him back into a crew, but we can still make him the primary. He'll be ready by the next turn. Then the backup is going to be... No one else really has good EVA skills. But let's put Gagarin as the backup again. And let's see what happens. And then once we hear the news for the season, I will... In the episode. Let's hope the Americans don't do anything. Ah, I have to assign the date. Okay, they don't do anything. So let's watch this thing and see where it goes. If anywhere. It works! No matter if it was 50% success chance, the roll was less than that. So the Proton is going to launch and that means its safety factor will improve next time. The question is, does the next step also succeed? No, failure. We can only be so lucky. There the thing blows up. Guidance failure. Payload tumbles and disintegrates. Mission failure. We missed it by one. Look at that. 76 by 77. Minus three. We are not going to survive much longer. And now the news. The space program has managed to transfer a top scientist from an Eastern Bloc country. R&D will improve. R &D. This Thank you, Svetlana. A hotline has been established with the American capital in order to prevent an accidental nuclear war. That might be a good idea. But what does the Politburo think of me? You see, they don't like me now. 
Politburo demands stricter measures be taken. They are closely monitoring your performance. That means I'm definitely going to get fired in the next episode. But let's see. I'll save it here and thank you again for watching. Let's see if we can still turn around this glorious Soviet program before I get fired. See you next time.